Vim Deer Milliliter CA Smart Pack එක රුපියල් 85ට දැන් වෙලඳ පොලේ. හරිම සුබදුයි. Tonight on First at Nine, this Sunday, the 5th of March, 2023. The neighborhood, India's relationship is one of the most important. Foreign Minister Ali Sabri tells Indian media, highlighting that India's growth will create more opportunities for Sri Lanka. Excited to see how India is progressing because we know that can spill over, and that can influence Sri Lanka and the whole region. Unproductive, Sri Lanka objects UNHRC Resolution 50-1, saying it is unproductive, unhelpful and will fail to serve the objective of promoting reconciliation in the country. Insufficient, IMF bailout package is not enough to propel economic growth, says MP Dr. Harsha De Silva, insisting that Sri Lanka must have an economic model. Now, you cannot use a, a short-term rescue program as a long-term growth strategy. From Adhaderana, this is Adhaderana First at Nine with Indivadi Amuata. Live from Studio 24 in Colombo. Alliance Finance Mitru Run Nai Sevaave Run Pao Mkata Propel Ek Laksha Hatta Daha Saka Eela Atti Karma And a warm welcome. We take you straight to your top story tonight on your other Therana English news. Uh, Sri Lanka has once again expressed the country's objection to Resolution 51-1 adopted against the island by the United Nations Human Rights Council in October last year. During a recent general meeting at the 52nd session of the UNHRC, Sri Lankan permanent representative in Geneva, Himali Arnuthalaka, noted that such resolutions are unhelpful to the people of Sri Lanka and will fail to serve the objective of promoting reconciliation in the country. She, however, noted that Sri Lanka remains open to constructive engagement with the Council. A new resolution titled Promoting Reconciliation, Accountability and Human Rights in Sri Lanka, which was tabled at the 51st regular session of the United Nations Human Rights Council, was adopted with majority votes on the 6th of October last year. A total of 20 countries, including the United Kingdom, the United States and France, voted in favour of the resolution, while seven countries, including China and Pakistan, voted against it. 20 countries, including India and Japan, abstained from voting for or against the resolution. Through the Resolution 511, the United Nations High Commissioner encourages the international community to support Sri Lanka in its recovery, however highlights the need to address the underlying causes of the crisis, including impunity for human rights violations and economic crimes. Addressing the UNHRC session in October last year, Sri Lankan Foreign Affairs Minister Ali Sabri categorically rejected the resolution, stating that it had been presented without the country's consent or consultation. Meanwhile, in Geneva on March 3rd, the Sri Lankan Permanent Mission once again expressed Sri Lanka's objection to Resolution 511. Addressing a general segment of the 52nd session of the UNHRC on Friday, the Sri Lankan permanent representative in Geneva, Himali Arunatilika, noted that these resolutions are unhelpful to the people of Sri Lanka as they will polarize the society and fail to serve the objective of promoting reconciliation in Sri Lanka. She said this is an unproductive drain on the scarce resources of UN member states which can be productively deployed elsewhere. Arunatilika said despite Sri Lanka's opposition to the country-specific resolutions, the country remains open to engage in constructive discussions with the Council, special procedures and treaty bodies. The Sri Lankan representative further noted that Sri Lanka looks forward to a meaningful dialogue when the country's sixth periodic report of the Office of High Commission for Human Rights is taken up for review later this month under the International Covenant on Civil and Political Rights. Foreign Minister Ali Sabri says India's growth in the region will create more opportunities for Sri Lanka and that it will be a win-win situation for both nations. During an interview with India News Network Vion, Minister Sabri said Sri Lanka is keen to enable Indian rupee transactions in the country 
and looks forward to improving connectivity with India via increased flight frequency and the proposed ferry services. How will you characterize uh, this relationship between Sri Lanka and India? Well, Sri Lanka-India relationship is the most important for Sri Lanka because it's, it's not singular angle one. It is a sharing of a civilization. Right now, with India rising, with so much of potentials and so much of advancement it is taking, there's a great opportunity for Indians and the Sri Lankans to collaborate together and create a situation which is win-win. Uh, no, good for Sri Lanka, good for India, and good for the region. So we are looking forward and we are, to be honest, we are very excited to see how India is progressing because we know that can spill over, mm -hmm. that can influence Sri Lanka and the whole region. Mm -hmm. In I am a firm believer of it is the regions which develop. This is the turn for South Asia. Mm -hmm. India is leading it and we all want peace, stability and progress for all. Any plans for trading arrangement when it comes to the Indian rupee and the Sri Lankan rupee, any conversation happening? Yes. Of course, yeah, it's happening in big time. We are looking at our, just what you did with the Singaporeans. We are talking and even yesterday I saw there was discussions going on. We are very keen to do that because uh, we understand 300 million uh, Indians traveling. Why not uh, come to Sri Lanka, mm -hmm. most of them, uh, and use your own currency? Mm -hmm. So we are trying to provide a platform for that. Uh, that's a great potential of doing it and I'm sure there will be significant milestones in months to come in terms of renewable energy, in terms of integration, in terms of currency swaps and also integration with the whole Indian apparatus there. Can I say that by the end of this year, an Indian tourist, if he goes to Sri Lanka, can use Indian rupee? That's what we are looking at. I'm hopeful it will happen. Not only that, we want more, more connectivity. I'm grateful that uh, one of the Sri Lankan private airlines are flying now to uh, one of the private airlines is now flying from Madras to the Jaffna, just started. And then we are also looking at ferry service from Tamil Nadu to, to Jaffna, KKS, 18 kilometers, 20 kilometers, 40 minutes probably you are there. So this is the kind of connectivity we want to create. What about defense partnership or defense relationship? Recently we had the defense discussions here in, uh, in New Delhi. Those discussions are ongoing. We have always underlined the fact that any legitimate concerns of India will be taken into consideration. But like any sovereign countries, we will have to still work with all the countries in the world. So we understand and we continue to talk and there are good level of understanding between senior officials in both defense, external affairs, in all the ministries together. Issues will come up from time to time. We should not be too excited about it. We should sit, discuss and resolve those things and I'm sure we will find a way to strengthen the relationship. Meanwhile, Foreign Minister Ali Sabri said Sri Lanka will not allow any country to make Sri Lanka a hub for anything harmful to India's national security. Speaking to Hindustan Times during his visit in India again, Sabri said India's relationship is one of the most important relationships in Sri Lanka's foreign policy due to the size of the economy and the neighbourhood that is being shared between the countries. During an interview with Hindustan Times, Sri Lanka's Foreign Minister Ali Sabri said Sri Lanka, under the guise of anything, will not allow any country to make Sri Lanka a hub for anything harmful to India's national security. Further, Sabri outlined proposals for closer cooperation with India to drive Sri Lanka's economic recovery, including an arrangement for payments in national currencies, energy linkages to transfer wind and solar power from Sri Lanka to India, and further development of the Trincomalee oil farm. The Sri Lankan Foreign Minister also mentioned about the efforts to devolve power via the implementation of the 13th Amendment to the Constitution. Meanwhile, in another interview with The Hindu, Sabri said the Sri Lankan government is confident that the Adani Group, which is currently constructing the West Container Terminal of the Colombo Port and expected to begin construction of the second wind power plant in Mana and Poonarin, will complete them as expected. He also said the investments from the Adani Group will become a precursor for much more investments to come from so many diverse investment institutions in India. Now a meeting between the top management of Salon Electricity Board and the members of the Committee on Restructuring CEB was recently held to expedite the proposed reforms of the country's electricity, transmitter and distributor. Attention was drawn at the meeting to restructuring plans that can be finalised before new draft laws are submitted to Parliament and it has been decided to implement some reforms that could be advanced before the final act is presented in Parliament. 
as an initial step requirements related to the maintenance of separate accounts and activities in the allocated zones of electricity distribution will be completed and mechanisms will be implemented in the four distribution divisions. Financial audits, assets audits, human resource audits and unbundling were identified as essential for restructuring initially and it has been decided to speed up the rebuild required audits. In addition, it has been proposed to utilize technology as much as possible during the restructuring process to increase efficiency and reduce costs at the power generator. Now, the discussion chaired by Ministry, uh, the Minister of Power and Energy was attended by members of the CEB Restructuring Committee, Chairman of CEB, General Manager, Additional General Managers and the Chief Financial Managers of the CEB. State gas supplier Litro Gas Lanka Limited has decided not to increase prices of their domestic LP gas products. Accordingly, the price of the 12.5 kilogram cylinder will remain at 4,743 rupees, while the 5 kilogram and 2.3 kilogram cylinders will remain at 1,904 and 80, or rather 833 rupees, respectively. Litro Chairman Mudita Piris said the decision was made considering the appreciation of the Sri Lankan rupee against the US dollar, which will consequently pass the benefit to consumers. Now the current refill prices will, as a result, remain the same for the month of March. Now taking you to political news, the National People's Power has requested the Election Commission in writing to immediately set a date to hold the 2023 local government elections. In a letter to the Chairman of the Election Commission, the NPP says that although the LG polls were previously announced to be held on the 9th of March, the Election Commission had later notified that the election will not be held in the date as a result of lack of funds to carry out election-related operations. However, the National People's Power letter to the Commission mentioned that the Supreme Court has recently issued an order preventing the Secretary to the Ministry of Finance from withholding funds allocated for the polls through the 2023 budget. Therefore, the party has requested the Election Commission to make necessary arrangements to hold the polls as soon as possible, conforming to the order by the Supreme Court. Leader of the opposition, Sajid Premadasa, meanwhile states that he will force the government to hold the local government election. Meanwhile, SLFP MP SM Chandrasena highlighted that the opposition will have to bear the responsibility of the country's economic uh, resurgence is told as a result. Dushana Vimarshana Kamitwe Sabahapati Yesare Ape Andwe Andra Kumara Disanaika Mukadakare Koti Ganak Sali Vidankarla Ekek Hire Mene Onama Banko Ginuma Parishakara and Bulwa Balata Labala Dila Tiba Andra Kumarata Abe Mona Dakare Aurdu Pahak Tibba Tanatura Sata Pahak de Akarne Five Tika Hadagana Gedaragia Madagahanda Apitona Urudda Kim Mativer Nakne Apitona Mativerne Deng Apitona Visanuma Deng Tava Durata Mera de Janata Avata Mehma Dahatu within the bear. Vartaman Jana di Pativaria Mativar and Akil and Kotetumakino. Shut up and sit down, Kila. Shresta di Karnekino. You shut up and sit down and give the money for elections. Mame Ekaki and Nakamati Mera de Janata Vage Hanata Api Idak Denova Ani Varenma Balakara Sitinova Mera Jeta Palat. Sri Lanka ni dahas paksi vidya tapi matiwar negara dah bermuka mati. Nau paksi ak vidya tapi darapu thawat mati ak tiennya wa. Mevela wa rata tiennya prasna wala me matiwar neng utara kuhan de pulu ande. Di hari ak mera chande denne. Wire ak pirimha ganda. Taraha pirimha ganda. Emna tu anaga tu pratipat tiad dekala bade pulat dekala neme. Dewi neng uta hati naik ke hati tiat janat betu ma mudal neng matiwar hati tiat. Ita ama hoding tiennya mudal tiga khalmana kerne kerno ini saata mai. Adewi neng uta arthi ke yangisi hela nagi ma kela tiennya. Jami hundar le hadi ganina arthi ke nawa now to stay with us until we return after this break to find out why MP Dr. Harsha De Silva thinks the IMF package is not a sufficient condition for Sri Lanka's economic growth.
Welcome back to the news. We take you to your business segment. Economist and politician Dr. Harsha De Silva states that Sri Lanka needs to decide on an economic model that can be used to sustain growth of the economy. He said the International Monetary Fund bailout program will not be sufficient for economic growth, although the facility is necessary at this juncture. His remarks to other Therana followed several key economic developments in Sri Lanka as the country awaits the 2.9 billion US dollar IMF bailout. The bailout package for Sri Lanka will be under the IMF's extended fund facility, which helps countries deal with balance of payments or cash flow problems. It will only be disbursed after satisfactory debt restructuring, including debt relief arrangements, have been struck between Sri Lankan authorities and respective bilateral creditor nations. Other reforms required by the IMF to disburse the EFF facility, the 17th for Sri Lanka, include tackling corruption, an increase in financial transparency, rebuilding local tax revenues and establishing a new Central Bank Act in lieu of the existing statute. Reducing. In this backdrop, Sri Lanka's Central Bank recently raised rates, surprising many analysts and experts with a view to combat inflation while also relaxing the Central Bank's currency band to move towards a market-determined exchange rate as it seeks to secure a bailout package from the IMF. We saw that the Central bank raised policy rates in a surprising sign by 100 basis points. The overall market was expecting the policy rates to be held at the current levels. As per the reason for the sudden move, there has been discussions going on with the IMF and the central bank and in order to finalize the extended funds facility with the IMF, both parties have currently reached consensus to raise policy interest rates in a small magnitude. However, that is in comparison to the spread between the market rates and the policy rates. This spread, the market interest rates in the period ahead is expected to reduce and adjust. Speaking at the Monetary Policy Review this week, where central bank's latest policy stance was announced, Governor Dr. Nandalal Veerasinghe highlighted that all prior actions necessary for the IMF bailout package have been taken. Now implemented all the prior actions and we are stand ready to adopt the IMF program, I think we hope that that will happen soon, hopefully within this month. And with that, we can move forward and make another good progress. In that process, IMF program outlook and the also the direction of the second process going forward. Following the surprise rate hike, the IMF yesterday issued a statement commending the central bank's commitment to reduce inflation swiftly and firmly towards a single-digit target. The international end also said the move is in line with objectives set under the inflation targeting framework, an important part of the disinflation strategy under the IMF's extended fund facility program. In this backdrop, taking to Twitter yesterday, SJB MP Dr. Harsh De Silva said that while the IMF package is essential for Sri Lanka as the country reels from the effects of a financial crisis, the bailout package will not be a sufficient condition for growth. Elaborating further on the matter to other than English news, Dr. Harsh De Silva highlighted that the country cannot use a short-term rescue program as a long-term growth strategy. IMF has been set up only to help countries in distress in terms of balance of payments crisis. Now, you cannot use a, a short-term rescue program as a long-term growth strategy. So once we get out of the situation we are in, then it is up to the people of this country to agree on a plan going forward. One alternative is to look at what's touted as a planned economy and the other is a more market-driven strategy the growth and development plan that we have suggested is one that we call a social market economy whereas on the one hand through markets through global integration sri lanka grows by linking up our manufacturing enterprise and then have a social equity and justice a structure where uh, people who need to be looked after by the state are looked after. So, Commenting on the claim that the government might go on a borrowing spree after the IMF package is finalised, Dr. De Silva stated that while the government will unlock budget financing possibilities internationally subsequent to the IMF deal, attention will have to be paid on how the borrowed money is utilised. What we now need is to be able to move beyond just the stabilization. The government is running massive deficits. 
and these deficits need to be bridged. If we try to restrict imports, you're not going to get our exports up. And by doing that, what has happened is that the economy is actually shrinking. So the government is going to utilize certainly the IMF agreement to unlock some other budget financing possibilities via the World Bank and the ADB and so on. In the short term, uh, they certainly will be positive in that confidence will once again get built. And if the reforms go through, uh, then the global markets would once again be able to upgrade uh, the credit ratings. Whatever uh, debt that we get into must be utilized to investments in those commodities that can be competitively traded both locally and, and overseas. Now, billionaire investor Mark Mobius says he cannot take his money out of China due to the country's capital controls and cautioned investors to be very careful about investing in an economy under a tight government grip. He said the Chinese government is restricting flow of money out of the country. He said the new Chinese government is taking golden shares in companies all over China, meaning Chinese government is going to try to control all of these companies. Mark Mobius added that it is not a good picture when the government becomes more and more control oriented in the economy. And that wraps up tonight's edition of First at Nine. Be sure to subscribe to our social media sites for the very latest. We'll be back tomorrow. and information you can trust 24 hours a day visit adaderna.lk